Hello everyone and welcome back to JJD TV. I'm your host Josh and with the World Cup coming to a close, one of the biggest question marks surrounding plenty of players is who got the World Cup push? Who got that boost to potentially earn them a dream transfer? When you're looking at the Canadian camp, I think it's hard to argue that that player wasn't Tejan Buchanan because even though Canada went 0-0-3, bounced out obviously in the group stage and had a couple questionable showings. Tejan Buchanan was pretty consistent throughout, very dangerous, looked very good 1v1 using his speed, and of course, he had the links that followed. And those links were Napoli, AC Milan, Inter Milan, and Juventus, plus a few more. So today, we have Uncle Sharma coming on the channel. He's gonna help me break down these type of links, seeing if how likely they are, when they're going to happen, and of course he's going to give his opinion on where he believes Tejan Buchanan should go. So hopefully you guys are excited for this, and if you are, as always, be sure to drop a like, drop a sub, and let's get into the episode now. Now it's time to give a shout out to the legends over at OneFootball who are the sponsors for all the World Cup content on the channel. OneFootball will absolutely keep you up to date during the World Cup as you head to the app, search for your favorite national teams like Canada or Germany. Now go give them a follow and watch your homepage get populated with stories that you will care about as they happen. You can also track matches live in the app, check out starting 11s, watch videos from behind the scenes as well as interviews, highlights and so much more including the ability to watch full matches directly in the app from around the world. It's truly an incredible app to help you stay up to date with everything going on in the beautiful game. I personally use OneFootball every day to track Canadians playing abroad and I highly recommend it for all of you watching. So click on the link in the description to download the OneFootball app. It helps creators like myself. Thank you all so much everyone. Now let's get into the episode. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So today we've brought on a special guest. Uncle Sharma, he's got an Inter Milan channel, very familiar with Syria, and we are going to put his knowledge to the test because today's episode is about Tejan Buchanan, kind of where he should go, obviously Uncle Sharma being an Inter fan, talking about those links and some other links as well, but first things first, how you doing my friend? I'm good, I'm good. Um, yeah, as I told you in private, I was I was been recovering from a, from a bit of a cold recently, but thank you for inviting me on to talk about a uh, very exciting player and an uh, exciting Canada team, I'll be honest. I was, even though you guys didn't really do much yeah. in the end, I was impressed. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it, it, was a, it was a bit of a disappointment. I mean, the expectations weren't really to get out of the group, you know. You can always hope and dream you, you wanted to, but reality suggested it was going to be very, very difficult. Um, I was expecting a couple better performances, but I think the one shining light on that Canada 0-3 tournament was the Belgium match because they did look pretty good and yeah. the biggest thing so far from what I'm seeing to come out of that Canada World Cup was basically Tejan Buchanan. Um, I thought he looked very lively throughout the three matches, creating chances, taking on players 1v1. He got the assist on Davies' goal. His finishing, a little questionable, but <laughs> other than that, I mean, when, you, you, when you're done with the World Cup, he's obviously playing in Belgium right now with Club Bruges, but he's been linked right now to Napoli. Inter Milan, AC Milan, Juventus. I don't know how strong each link is. I don't know if a transfer will happen, but that's basically what we're here to talk to. So, I mean, obviously, you being an Inter fan, we're going to start there. Uh, I think it's it's intriguing. Now, just on the outside looking in, uh, and this goes for every one of the clubs in my eyes, if Tejan is going to get any type of minutes or interest to go to it, probably someone would have to leave. So, given the fact that Inter line up in a 3-5-2 for the majority of the matches mm -hmm. and Dumfries is linked away, Mm -hmm. Is that the obvious correlation there? Or what are your thoughts on basically Inter and Tejan Buchanan? Yeah, I think, you know, we, our formation with Nzagi and with Conte was pretty, you know, we're wedded, we're locked down to this 3-5-2. So there's, that's not changing. So, and in our formation, our probably most expendable player right now with good transfer value is Dumfries. So that right wing back position. So, yeah, and it looks like, you know, Buchanan you know, started off as a winger, but he's kind of transitioning. As I think a lot of people in, in, you know, as football moves to these three defender formations, a lot of wingers are having to transition to either different positions or this wing back position. So I, I can definitely see the the correlation there. And I can see why we're linked with him because, yeah, he was definitely one of the, the players that I, you know, was most impressed with from from the Canada team. Obviously, Davies is just the obvious one. But uh, of Stakio, I really liked him. Um, but yeah, Buchanan was the other standout performer and he in terms of what inter need he is that type of profile like we need someone with a bit of pace 
we need someone with a bit of dribbling ability, um, with a bit of creativity from the side, and that, that's what uh, that's what Buchanan brings. So um, I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense. Yeah, and, and the fu- the funny thing is, is um, yeah, see, like he he did start out. He played in for New England Revolution. He's played in a few different positions there, right mm-hmm. back because they played like a a four two three one and up on the wing. He's a very attack minded player. His finishing ability would be the biggest critique I have about his game, which is why we have seen him feature a lot as a wing back for Canada. He's playing there for Club Bruges, whether it's a left wing back, right wing back. But I mean, if I'm looking at this player and, and coming from like the inter perspective. He's got a ton of pace. Uh, he's got ability to take on uh, defenders 1v1. And I mean, just he put it on full display in front of the world. He had put in a couple of beautiful crosses and one of them ended up in the back of the net. So uh, is the reason that Dumfries would be looking to go out is because Inter need to make a little bit of money? Is that is like the, around the financials and he's just obviously had a good World Cup as well. Is that where it is coming in? You you let a player go out and then maybe even bring a Buchanan on a loan or something along those lines? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, Inter's financial situation at the moment isn't great, and we pretty much have to sell one big-ish player. Who, yeah, we have to make around 50, 60 million every summer these days because of like some of financial restrictions that we have. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, don't freeze. You know, out of the big boys in our team, you know, Lautaro, Barella, you know, Bastoni, they're they're kind of the untouchables, I would say, of this team. So don't freeze. Is, is is one of the main players. He's definitely you know our starting right wing back, but. He, we know his limitations, you know, he, he had a decent World Cup, like that USA game was definitely his, you know, shining light because he's had the two assists and a goal. Um, but, you know, he, we know what his limitations are. He's kind of technically limited. Um, you know, he puts his heart and soul. He's defensively solid. He's physically a beast. But he, you know, especially since Perisic left Inter, we just don't have that player um especially on the wings to be able to create that 1v1 situation or create something out of nothing so there is that need in the team and Dumfries just doesn't has that ability so yeah it's it's a, it's a few things all together and yeah as you said his value is probably maybe at all time high right now cuz you know the world cup hype <laughs> when it yeah, when yeah. It kicks in so yeah a few factors do you think if and again it might not be Buchanan obviously we're just talking about it from the Buchanan perspective but if it was Tejon and Dumfries went out. Do you think that he would become just like a, a like for like type of starter, or do you think there's actual competition within the club that might push Tej onto the bench if he did come over? Well, we have Matteo Darmian. Uh, you know, we call him Matty Dom's nickname. You know, he's he's a trusty, reliable one of those guys. You know, he's 31, 32 now. You know, one of those Italian defenders who can play centre back, uh, right wing back, left wing back. We put him everywhere, and he always puts in you know six six point five out of ten comes up with goals here and there so I would probably think you know Inzaghi would probably if you brought in Buchanan you probably still you might stick with Damian and I think Buchanan coming from MLS coming from the Belgian league I think he would have to go under a, a tactical masterclass you know for the first few weeks and months because you know the, the Italian league is still you know it's not as it was before but it's still the most tactical league I would say out there and I think especially as a defender, wing back, you'd have to go through some learning time for sure. So I don't think he would come in and be the starter straight away. I think it would have to it would take him some time to to get into that into that, you know, starting position. Yeah, I mean, and that's I mean, you, you I would as a, coming from a Canadian perspective, if you want to see like a guy like Tejon take that step. You want to you want to see a good manager get a hold of him. Uh, I think that playing as a wing back and there's a couple of different te- clubs we're going to talk about here where mm. he could do that. But it just it, 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 it kind of like. Full, like, ra- nicely rounds his game because he's mm. got the ability going forward and Tejon has proven in the past that he can't be defensively re- reliable even though he prefers to go forward so mm. I think having a good manager under that and just kind of tweaking him to this type of level would be a good idea um, and last one before we move on to the different club do you believe Dumfries will end up moving in January or do you think it would more than likely happen in the summer? I think and hope it would be the summer I don't want to sell any starters in the in January I don't think Inter would take that gamble to sell a starter in middle of the season um so i think and i think usually you know clubs make those big investments in the summer as well because we're talking about 40 50 million plus euros uh, if it comes to selling dumfries so i think and hope as i said it will be in, in the summer yeah and it, it makes sense and there's also rumors going around because again the Can- a lot of canadian fans are just very excited about these rumors but in reality <laughs> as well tejan could be sold to a number of different clubs if it happens and be loaned right back to club rouge um, for the remainder yeah, of the year yeah. Yeah. um but let's move on to the next club then uh because there are he's been like i said he's linked with four and they all all these stories came out right in a row so when, <laughs> again take 
take of it what you will. The World but Cup the next, hype. <laughs> yeah, literally the World Cup hype. And like I said, Tejon was the biggest one who got the, the bump. And that's why these links are happening. But the one is an intriguing one. And, and it's a it's a club that's having an incredible season right now. And they're both Champions League. They sit top of the table. It's Napoli. Uh, I guess just give me your thoughts on that. I, I, I like this Napoli team a lot. And again, if Tejon, whether he goes here or in the summer, it's because probably a player's going out. Chucky Lozano was, has been linked for some time now to move mm -hmm. on from Napoli. And again, more than likely, if it happens, it'll probably happen in the summertime. But what are your thoughts on that link? And do you think that Napoli could be a good fit for him? I think, yes, as you mentioned, if if Lozano leaves, even, even the, you know, that position in the Napoli team is up for grabs because neither Lozano or Politano, they haven't really grabbed it because obviously Kavara Scali on the other side is, you yeah. know, undisputed <laughs> starter. So it is up for grabs that position, even if Lozano, I don't, even if he doesn't leave. But at the same time, you know, I've looked at, you know, because I'm not too familiar with him, but his end product, I think, for a winger would have to improve quite a bit because um, it looks like, because I've seen his numbers in the in the Belgian league last season, he put up one goal and two assists. So yeah. you would have to considerably, you know, increase his output. But at the same time, as you mentioned, um, the coach has a lot of, you know, effect or, you know, say in these types of things. And Spalletti is a really good coach, especially when it comes to wingers. So he could maybe take that next step uh, at Napoli. But as you said earlier on in the video, I think the wing back role, even though I don't know him too much, it just seems like a better fit because, you know, it, you don't expect the, the too much final product from a wing back. Um, so it kind of suits his, his, his style of play, I think, a little bit more. So I don't think Napoli would be the ideal team for him. And as us Canadians, I mean, we want to see Tejan play higher up the pitch because he's such mm. an exciting player. He's got that speed, but he does. I mean, and I think he's pretty good with his final ball in terms of, of a cross or that ability, but his finishing ability definitely needs to be worked on quite a bit. And I think that's why we're seeing him, at least at club level, shine in this wing back role. How is left foot? He, he's, he's pretty good with both feet, actually, to be mm. fair. Um, that's why he's, he's even featured as a left wing back primarily at, for his time at Club Bruges. He's mm -hmm. starting to get switch, switched over to the right side right now, but he's very versatile. He's kind of like, like, again, like a different version, but kind of like Perisic. How Perisic is, he's not quite as good in terms of, you know, right foot, left foot, because Perisic is excellent there, yeah. but he can play on both flanks very comfortably. Um, I prefer him a little bit more on the right because of his, it's just, he is a righty and he's got a, a good cross on him if you can get him in that opportunity. Mm. I like when he takes on players 1v1. When he's on the left against similar to Perisic, whether he puts, he can't really go in and put in that cross with that left, but he can easily cut on and take a, take a hit. Yeah. But that, so I agree with you. I think more than likely we're going to see a wing back role again, whether it's in Italy, wherever you can, it ends up moving on unless he can really up that finishing product, which he hasn't really shown. Uh, the goal he scored was, was quite something else in Club Bruges as well, but he just, just doesn't seem to get those type of opportunities to score. He did mm. got a decent goal scoring record for Canada, but that's why this next club is, to me, the most intriguing. Again, we're going to be probably looking at a wing back role. Mm. It's Juventus. They play with uh, the back three as well. I mean, you've kind of seen different systems under Allegri as well, but <laughs> I, I kind of look at him as a, if he was, again, if he was going to go there as a Quadrado type replacement, but probably more in the future. Yeah. I don't think he would come in anytime soon. If Juventus did get him, they'd probably ship him out. But I kind of want to focus a little bit on just what Juventus is up to because <laughs> they are kind of all over the place. Like, obviously, it's a massive club. Um, they've won nine Scudettos in a row before going on a whirlwind of a few months. They spend a ton of money on Juvent or on Ronaldo, and I think that probably put them in a big hole. So, mm. I mean, just – I mean, I, I think the fit could make sense, like, again, down the road. But just in reality, it, is it a safe bet to go to a club that looks to be – and, and obviously just the loss of some of the, the management as well very recently. Would, would you say, no, like stay, stand clear or is there a, a light at the end of the tubble, tunnel for Juventus? Yeah, I mean, the first of all, the Allegri, you know, Allegri isn't really the type of coach to, you know, bring through a player like that. I don't think he would be, as you said, like he, he wouldn't bring through a, a, talent, a younger player like Buchanan coming from a foreign league like that. Um, he usually goes with the tried and trusted or someone that has, you know, Serie A experience. So already there, that would be a red flag. Um, and yeah, as you said, they chop and change formation so much. Um, and yeah, the off the field situation at the moment is very, um, is very doubtful. Or, you know, you just don't know what's going on, to be honest. So yeah, I would probably steer away from that if I was Buchanan myself. Um, although, you know, the, it's probably got a good English speaking core. So it probably, you know, you know, you got the McKennies in there. I know most of the squad. You know, Pogba. Um, you know, there's it's a good English-speaking core in that in that squad. So it wouldn't be the end of the world. But yeah, I don't. Again, I don't really see the ideal fit. Uh, Juventus being the ideal fit for him. 
I got, I got a lot of people. I put out a tweet just when these links were coming around because it was fun. I was like, I just wanted to hear some some um, opinions, and I put out <laughs> where do you want them to go. And the this the, the 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 number one word that kept being used, not Juventus dumpster fire. That was like that was a continuous. As a lot of people wanted to see Napoli again, just probably because Canadians want to see him play a little bit further up the pitch. Mm -hmm. I did get some inters as well, um, but Juventus was pretty unanimously. No, stay away. <laughs> like because, and then I had some like some uh, guys who reached out to me and said, "Yeah, like, I, I mean, Juventus, it's a big club, but like you said, I mean, he's not gonna get a chance under Allegri. More than likely, like it, it would take years, and if more than likely, they would probably just buy him. And you've seen players kind of sit by the wayside before they get just moved on again. Yeah, so, yeah, I'll just it, uh, it's, see it. <laughs> it's an interesting one. But the final one before we uh, ask you your opinion on on all of them is AC Milan, and this one's. Kind of intriguing as well. I, I don't know what I think about this one. There seems to be there like again the four two three one system. Probably that right hand side mm -hmm. is is somewhat up for debate. Um, Junior Macias is playing there. I think Stella Macas sometimes gets a little bit of looks. I don't know what's your what's your opinion on AC Milan and, and could that be fit? I know there's obviously a lot more trust in youngsters, mm -hmm. but I don't know if Buchanan would fall in line with that. Yeah, I think in in terms of like Milan um, uh, dealing, I think he fits that profile. Like they always go for kind of younger um you know athletic profile it fits in and uh, similar to napoli as you said like the that wing the right wing position is up for grabs like no one's really nailed it down and they don't really expect too much out of it by the looks of it from that position like salama because he's he, he he's the type of guy to put up you know two goals or three assists like for the season because they expect mainly like a more defensive because leao is the main guy on the left hand side so they use this right wing role to be like the ball the counterbalance so they expect more hard work and you know defensive discipline from this from this side so that i think that yeah compared to napoli that probably could fit in better again you know you know a youngish squad you know good uh project for younger players as you said to give trust um to the youth so i, I would probably see that as the mm, second best fit I think, <laughs> out, of, out of all the options um i think that would be intriguing and i think yeah as i said i think milan i would be surprised if they don't go for him interesting so I mean, that is interesting because um you've had I and mean, you've had a few except for juventus you've had a few good good uh things to say about each club in a project and that was actually the last question we had for you is basically um rank them uh, you can take two main criteria where do you think that you know he, he would he would best suit and obviously that correlates with where uh, you probably play so i mean if you're gonna rank the four just you um, last. Yeah. last yeah that's clear all right that's fair that's fair we can get that one out of the way uh then i could go napoli uh, as i said i just even though i think you know he would be okay there i just don't think um he would be starter there i think they would still be looking for someone with more output potentially um then milan as i said he, I think he does fit the project and the way they, you know, the style of players that they buy, the youth for project. But then I think this, yeah, Inter, I think I would be my number one. I just think uh, if this is if Dumfries leaves, though, yeah. and right now, probably not. But if, if Dumfries leaves and there is that gap in the squad and Inter, you know, we need to buy slightly someone a bit younger, a bit cheaper compared to some of our previous transfer dealings someone with a bit more potential but you have to some work to do and Inzaghi has shown that he's quite good with wing backs and kind of improving players as well like Dumfries was one of them so I would say Inter in the 3-5-2 that's that would be the, the ideal move and finally a Canadian in the Serie A <laughs> Brampton yeah. massive yeah but no I I like it I, I I definitely agree I think with um Juventus last as well and probably Napoli even though Napoli you know it's very appealing to think mm. but i just like you said and i really liked your point though around milan's right winger whoever or right attacking mid whoever it could be it's the fact that they don't have a massive output and that's one of tejan's biggest flaws is that he hasn't got those type of numbers yet he doesn't have the history there um and that they invest in younger players so you kind of you kind of swayed me a little bit but i think it, again in terms of position and probably where you're gonna get the most out of buchanan it would probably be at that wing back so yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll go in line with you, but we'll let you, the comment section decide what, of the two Milan sides. Which one uh, do you think that would be the best fit for Tejan Buchanan? But that is all the time we have for um, I'm Sharma. I appreciate you coming on as always. If you want to give a little shout out uh, to your channel and I mean, if Tejan goes there, if we have enter any Inter fans tuning in, that uh, where they can find you. We'll put his link in the description, but you can just do a little maybe a little summary before we go here. 
Yeah, no, thank you for having me on JJD TV. I, I have been following you for a while since you went on uh, Rabona TV. So shout out to Adrian. And yeah, you can find me on uh, at Uncle Sharma on uh, YouTube. I make primarily interrelated content, match reactions, you know, all that kind of stuff, transfer news. But I also try to delve into Serie A in general, but Inter keep me busy enough. So yeah, if you're interested in the black and blue from Milan, check me out. Beautiful. All right. I appreciate it as always, my friend. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. As always, drop a like, drop a sub. We'll see you soon. Cheers, friends. Ciao.